the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the, Saint, in the 16th century, St. Philip Neri arrived in the Palazzo Massimo in Rome, where Paolo, a 14-year-old boy of a family, had just died. Father Neri had visited the boy several times as he was dying of a fever, but this time arrived just after Paolo had died. Upon learning this, he entered the room, threw himself on the edge of the bed where Paul's corpse, Paolo's corpse, laid and prayed for about 10 minutes. He then took holy water and sprinkled the boy's face. He put a little in his mouth. After this, he breathed into the boy's face, laid his hands upon his forehead, and called out loudly, Paolo, Paolo. Suddenly the, boys, the boy opened his eyes and told St. Philip Neri that he had a sin that he must confess in the sacrament of penance. After hearing his confession, Father Philip talked to Paolo for about 30 minutes about his deceased mother and sister, and he asked Paolo if he, could, if he would die, could die willingly now, and Paolo said, yes, most willingly. And he said, go and be blessed and pray to God for me. And then Paolo immediately, with a serene countenance on his face, died again. Today's gospel recounts the third and greatest of the resurrections of our Lord's, our Lord, this of his friend Lazarus, who had been in the tomb for four days. The raising of, of Lazarus prefigures Jesus' own resurrection, yet it is fundamentally different, unlike Lazarus, who is united to the same body as before and will eventually die again and definitively. Our Lord Jesus Christ rose with a glorified body and will never die again. In today's first reading, God speaks to the prophet Ezekiel and offers a promise to his chosen people that they, may return, they will return from exile to their land. It is also a prophecy that refers to the end of time when all the dead will rise from their graves. In today's gospel, Martha expresses belief in this great event when she says of her brother Lazarus, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. In response, Jesus tells her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. With these words, our Lord is speaking both spiritually and bodily. In essence, he is teaching, whoever believes in me, even if he dies, if, if his body dies, will live spiritually. Everyone who lives spiritually and believes in him will never die spiritually. Thus, if we remain spiritually alive, then when our body dies, our soul will continue to live spiritually, ultimately will enjoy eternal happiness in heaven, even if, as many, as most do, we will have to spend time first to be purified in purgatory. But if we are spiritually dead, when our body dies, our soul will experience eternal death and darkness. St. Paul writes of this in similar terms in today's second reading. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but on the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. St. Paul expresses the fundamental and dramatic distinction between those who are living the life of grace with the Spirit dwelling in them and those who are living in the flesh and outside that, that grace. In this life, if we are living outside the life of scientific divine grace, that is, outside the divine life, we cannot please our Lord because we have rejected his divine friendship. This leads only to sadness in this life and if unrepented forever in the next, since if we die separated without the divine life in our souls, we will be separated from God by our own choice for all eternity. To live spiritually is to, li is to have the Holy Spirit alive and working within our souls. This describes the person who is in the state of grace with God. It is only when only, only then that the Spirit of God truly dwells in us. On the contrary, when we are in the state of mortal sin, we are spiritually dead and thus devoid of the Holy Ghost present within our souls. For this reason, the Church encourages us to receive the sacrament of penance frequently, monthly or even more, and as soon as possible be full out of God's grace through mortal sin. Today's Gospel, the Evangelist St. John notes that our Lord Jesus weeps after seeing Mary of Bethany and, other, and others weeping after Lazarus' death. Our Lord weeps even though he knows that he will soon raise Lazarus from the dead. The only other time in, in the gospel 
which records our Lord Jesus weeping, is when he contemplates the future destruction of Jerusalem and the temple. In both cases, our Lord Jesus weeps over the consequences of sin, which are death and destruction. It is natural to weep at the death of a loved one, but it is a supernatural grace and gift to weep for our sins and those of others. In fact, St. Ignatius of Loyola said it is one gift that we ought especially to pray for. St. Francis of Assisi, in his prayer at the eighth station of the cross on the women who are weeping in Jerusalem, sums up the teaching of the saints. O Jesus, I beseech thee to move my heart by thy divine grace, so that from thy, my eyes tears may flow abundantly, and I may weep all my days over thy sufferings, and still more over their cause, my sins. Such is both a great preparation for humble and fruitful confession and happy death, and certainly very important and helpful thoughts in these final couple, last weeks, couple of weeks of Lent. May our Blessed Mother, St. Joseph, St. Philip Mary, and all the angels and saints help us to daily seek to grow in the grace and life of Christ, the great life of God in our souls, in this divine life, through, especially through frequent reception of our Lord's mercy in the sacrament of penance, and, and particularly through our extra prayer, penance, and works of mercy this Lent. Through these great practices, may we more fully experience the divine life within our souls and grow in the hope that, like Lazarus, our Lord Jesus will be for us this Easter and forever, the resurrection and the life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.